Hi everyone, I finished my first year in electrical engineering now and I'm about to go into my second year. So I was reflecting on the year and what worked for me and I figured I'd make a video to help others out. I managed to average 83% over the six modules and I've extracted five tips that worked for me. Just note that this video is skewed towards electrical engineering students as that's what I am, but you can still benefit if you study something else. So for those in a rush, here are the tips up front. Number one, have a great relationship with the lecturers. Number two, never let the assignments pile up. Number three, don't memorize. Number four, Focus on your weaknesses. And number five, get an iPad, pencil, and the Notability app. And in case you're wondering, here are the modules I studied and the grades that I got for each module. So as you can see, I averaged 83% across the six modules in my first year, the lowest being 77 out of 100. That was in engineering systems and data acquisition, and the highest being 88 out of 100, which was in computers and engineering. So let's get started with tip number one. So number one, having a great relationship with your lecturer. The way I see it is the lecturer is my best friend. This is the person that's going to be teaching you, grading you, giving you references, and potentially after you graduate, helping you find a job. So why would you not strive to have an amazing relationship with them? You know, they have contacts in industry. They obviously know a lot about their subject. And in pretty much all cases, they actually genuinely want to help you out. So why would you not want to strive to have an amazing relationship with them? They're getting paid regardless whether you like them or not. It can only help your grade if they like you. So here's what I do. Ask them how they are wish them well and thank them often. I stay in constant communication with them both in class and out of class. You know, I participate in all the online lectures, making sure I'm involved in the chat and I email them loads, literally. And of course, sit at the front. Biggest pro tip I have is try and add some material to the lecture. So for my engineering design project, I found a PDF which was published by an American university and had a bunch of additional information that my lecturer didn't have. So I sent that to him and his teaching assistants and they loved it. For my computer systems architecture module, COVID hit and we couldn't go into the lab to use the Raspberry Pis. So what I did was I found an online emulator, I wrote a guide on how to use it and then I passed it on to the lecturer and he was ecstatic. Not only would they be more lenient with you when it comes to your grading, they'll also make much more of an effort to help you when you ask them for help. So ask a lot. Tip number two, never let the assignments pile up. Any modules with weekly submissions or reports do them that week. This is how you're going to get caught out. I had three of my modules that were like weekly tests or weekly reports, weekly submissions, whatever. When you get a weekly submission, do it that week. I saw students struggling to remember the most basic concepts from week three's report because they were doing it in week nine. Do week three's report before week four starts. I get that obviously procrastination is cool. It's spoken about a lot. But the way I see it is when you procrastinate, you're just being mean to your future self. Be kind to your future self. You don't want to be sitting down in week nine trying to remember what happened in week three or week four. So if you love yourself, do that weekly report before the next one comes out. Pro tip here is to prioritize the modules based upon the workload. If you've got one module with weekly reports, usually you'll have another module whereby it will have one exam at the end of the semester. So prioritize the weekly report one because that's the one that's going to be piling up against you. And you can always go do the weekly reports, get them done quickly, and then you can start studying pure focused on the exam. So here, have a look at my exam plan. This is in Notion. Very good app I, I recommend students to use. So here I've got my timetable. And as you can see, I had three assignments that were due on the same day. And then I had nothing for nine days. Then I had an exam and nothing for 10 days. Then a report due three days later. Then an exam five days later. Then an assignment two days later. So I just purely focused on what was next. Once I did one report, I was like, okay, do another one, do another one. Then, I, okay, I've got to revise for an exam now for the next nine days. And that was it. I just did it based upon my workload. Literally digital electronics, that didn't get any attention until the 13th of May after I'd finished my data acquisition exam. Prioritize modules based upon their workload. Tip number three, don't memorize. I get that this might be controversial. And again, you know, this video is skewed towards electrical engineering. So if you're a medical student, of course, you have to memorize a bunch. But as an electrical engineer, you really don't need to memorize in all of those equations. You just need to know how to use them. All of my lecturers allowed us to bring in either notes into the exam or they allowed pure open book exams, meaning you could go online and search for whatever you wanted. They know that in real life, you have Google. You're not going to have to sit down with your employer and try and memorize any sort of X or Y, Z equation. So you're much better served doing a bunch of programming, a bunch of circuit analysis, problems and just doing some general reading to increase your overall understanding of the subjects. 25 hours spent memorizing equations and definitions of words versus 25 hours analyzing circuits. The golf in class between the two engineers is going to be huge. Trust me in on this one. Learn, problem solve and try to understand. Don't memorize. All right, tip number four, focus on your weaknesses. My maths sucks. When I decided after nine years out of education to go back into it and study electrical engineering, I knew I needed to brush up on my maths. I started on Khan Academy learning 10-year-old maths and I worked my way up. 
I knew I'd be fine with the programming modules, writing reports. I knew all of that wouldn't be a problem. The way I see it is anything holding me back needs to get resolved. It's a basic math issue as well when it comes to strengths versus weaknesses. If you work on your strengths, you may only partially improve them. So like, for example, improving your circuit analysis from 75 out of 100 to 83 out of 100 is an increase of eight points. If, however, you work on your weakness, something like programming, if you was at a 40 out of 100 and you managed to get that to a 60, 65 out of 100, you've improved 20, 25 points. If you're incredibly weak in one area, that area undoubtedly is going to cause you a lot of stress during the year. I'm looking at all of my second year modules now and analyzing which of them I'm going to be most scared of. And then I'm just going to tackle that one. The last thing I want to do is reset any of my modules because I failed them. My plan is to get my weaknesses up to a definite pass and then double down on my strengths. I don't want to be that guy that skipped leg day. Do you? Finally, last one, iPad, Apple Pencil, Notability. I left this last just because I know not everyone can afford a 300 quid iPad, 75 quid pencil and a 10 pound app. However, if you can, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I'd put this probably number one. The iPad was everything I needed this past year. I took all my notes on it and recorded all of the audio of my lectures on it as well. When I was studying things like circuit analysis or digital electronics, it would have been impossible to take those notes on a laptop. You don't want to be writing out binary numbers or drawing circuits on a, on a laptop. You definitely don't want to be typing out simultaneous equations or anything like that. I was able to draw all of those circuits, write all of those equations quickly, whilst also writing over my lecture slides, which was a huge help as well. If I did that on paper, I'd have to be printing out the lecture slides. Sometimes the lecturer doesn't release the slides until as soon as the lecture starts. If I've got it on the iPad, I can log straight onto the website. As soon as the lecturer released the slides, I can go straight on, download the lecture, and I can write my notes over the lecture slides. Huge, absolutely huge. So I have the iPad 2018. It's perfect for me. For more detail, I definitely advise watching Ali Abdal's uh, video on this. He goes into a bunch of detail. He actually convinced me to get the iPad. So thanks, Ali. Link to his videos in the description. So that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll do my best to make another one of these videos after my second year. Hopefully, I'll do a bit better than 83% next time. All the best in your studies, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.